Good day. This is my modified Jensen 25. I put it on a wood base. Why the wood base? Well, nope, it's not to add a second boiler, but rather so I could try this. I've tried to capture the essence of the old Jensen Model 10 that was built with a uh, direct drive generator on the same platform as the engine itself. Well, that's not possible today, but I've got a compromise here. Now this ugly mess is a, I don't know the proper term, but I call it a semi-universal joint. There's a steel rod in the middle that floats to a degree. And uh, actually I'm just going to switch over to macro mode here so I can get some closer shots. Be right back. There we are. That's a little bit easier to see now. Like I said, I just call this a semi-universal joint. It has a floating steel rod in the middle, engages on a pin here and a pin here, 90 degrees apart, and there's enough slop inside the bushings to uh, allow for lateral movement in either direction. It's a very loose-fitting pin. Um, I still have to trim down the grub screws so they fit a little neater, uh, sorry, neater than that. I haven't yet test run this yet, so I just want to see how this works. I did not use a straight rod to couple generator to engine because of the nature of the separate bases being bolted to a wooden base uh, which can flex or swell or whatever through time and bugger up the alignment. So it needed to have a floating connection of some sort. I thought about using gears, but I don't have any gears yet. I even thought about using a rubber hose and maybe clamping the hose with a bit of brass pipe to each line, but that would look crude. This looks crude, but it's clever anyway. Um, the rubber washers are here, just uh, kind of like grease seals. What I did to uh, hopefully extend the life of these little brass screws was to load up each bushing inside. I packed it full of a, a very heavy grease. You can see some of it here, this yellow stuff. It's actually a bullet lube. Thompson Center bore butter, actually. Very thick stuff water-soluble. I just packed the bushings full of that just so, uh, you know, just to just to tighten them up a little bit so that uh, there's not a lot of backwards-forwards play. Like I said, I don't know how long these uh, pins are going to last because they're just tiny brass screws. But uh, the whole thing seems to spin fairly well. And, uh, you know, if this works, this might be an idea for you fellows out there who would love to have a, a Jensen 10, but, you know, just like me, can't really afford a nice one. Well, anyway, we'll be right back uh, with some steaming videos, hopefully. Well, here we are in steam. I've got it running very slowly. You can see it still idles fairly well, so there must be uh, not a whole lot of resistance in that U-joint. I'll try to slow it down a little bit more. It's not perfect, but... Not bad for just uh, hand tools and a drill press, I think. It's also the first time I've ever tapped threads since high school anyway. Even then I only did one. Let's see if we can reverse on the fly. Not quite. Ah, that's a slower direction anyway. Anyway, let's open it up and see what it does.
I'll have to glue that chimney on. But that's always falling off. There is a bit of vibration. I don't know if I'll get any premature bearing wear or what on this. Surging a bit now, I don't know why. Oh, you know what? The grease has come out of my joint. See? Yeah, the grease is coming out. It's now no longer stiff. That's why the light's surging a bit. And that's my grub screw letting go. Well, still need some fine tuning, but... The video cut off there before I could finish. But, uh, it still needs some fine tuning, but, uh... It's not a bad first test run. It's not the best arrangement for a joint. Probably. It's funny, I used two grub screws because I kind of thought I'd get some slippage. I didn't think they'd slip like that. Oh well, back to the drawing board. We'll see if I can get one more short video of it just running to post separately on YouTube. That way you don't have to listen to me talking.